Hello aspirants, welcome to the conversational video series brought to you by Vision IS. In today's session, we are going to discuss about a very concerning category of diseases which are much more dangerous than the COVID-19. In terms of mortality, while COVID-19 accounted for nearly 7 million deaths over a period of 4 years, these diseases account for 41 million deaths every year. In terms of economic cost, well, as per reports, these diseases can cost the world nearly 40 plus trillion dollars by the year 2030. These diseases are called non-communicable diseases or NCDs. To enlighten us on this particular topic, today we have with us an eminent vision as faculty, Jasmine Ma'am. Let's know from her whether or not non-communicable diseases are silent killers. Welcome Ma'am. Thank you Chiranjeev. Ma'am, let's begin this session with a very simple yet important question. What are non-communicable diseases? Non-communicable diseases are chronic diseases. Uh, when I use the word chronic, uh, what I mean to say is, it, these are long-term diseases, diseases which can have a lesser severity, but their duration is very long. These diseases are caused because of lifestyle and environmental related factors. They can also be because of some genetic factors. So diseases like diabetes, asthma, anemia, heart diseases, these would be some of the common non-communicable diseases. Okay ma'am. Now there is a prefix non, that certainly means there is another category of diseases, communicable diseases. How are these NCDs different from communicable diseases? Communicable diseases are caused by different organisms, like it can be a bacteria, a virus, a fungus, but there has to be a causative organism for the disease. Because there is an organism which is causing the disease, these diseases can also spread from one person to the other, what we say contagious diseases. So uh, diseases like tuberculosis, it is a communicable disease. It can spread from one person to the other through coughing, sneezing. But non-communicable disease has no organism, nothing like a bacteria, virus or fungus which is responsible for causing it. And because of that, it cannot spread like that. If one person has hypertension, it will not be transferred to the next person. That's the basic difference. Now from the definition of communicable diseases, the way you defined it, it sounds more scary than non-communicable diseases. But on the contrary, non-communicable diseases have become a major global concern. Why is that? Communicable diseases, uh, of course, uh, we've known, we've studied about them for many, many years. And there have been a great effort uh, which is being made or which has been made for many, many years to control communicable diseases. So for most of our common communicable diseases, we have found treatments. We have medicines which work well. We know how to control them. We have vaccines for them. But non-communicable diseases, uh, on the other hand, they are slightly uh, less focused on. And in recent years, what we have observed is that these diseases are spreading very fast, like the numbers which you shared with us. 40 million people every year globally are going to be suffering from or are going to be dying because of non-communicable diseases. Now, that number is huge. Earlier, these diseases were limited to, you know, some parts of the world, like they were considered to be industrialized world, world's diseases, but now they are all over the world. All income groups, everyone is suffering from non-communicable diseases. So one reason for this discussion is that the incidence of non-communicable diseases is increasing. The second thing now is that earlier, a lot of these diseases were related to age. Like, you know, after a certain point of age, maybe a person would have some heart disease, right? Old age diseases after 50 years, 60 years. But now that's not the case. People who are young, very young, are suffering, not just suffering, they're even dying because of uh, non-communicable diseases. Like somebody in their 20s or in their 30s, they can very well have diabetes, they can have asthma, they can have uh, hypertension. And this is becoming more and more common. That's why there is growing concern against non-communicable diseases. Thank you, ma'am. You have already touched upon the target groups when it comes to non-communicable diseases. Could you please elaborate upon the same, like what are the primary risk factors and what are the age groups? Could you just repeat that? 
So, uh, if, it, if I talk about risk factors, this word risk factor is very important here because there are conditions which kind of increase the chances of having the disease. Of course, all of these diseases have their individual cause like, you know, diabetes might be occurring because insulin is not working properly in a body. So that's an individual cause of our disease is working. But there will definitely be common risk factors which are for non-communicable diseases. Like you spoke about age group. So age would be like a non-modifiable risk. A risk which we cannot change, uh, 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 which is going to be there, right? Okay, now you are old, you are at a greater risk. Other things could be, there could be the idea of gender. Like there would be diseases which would be more common in female. There could be diseases which are more common in uh, males. And there can also be some genetic factors contributing to which, which again we cannot control or modify. But the discussion needs to be more on the factors which we can modify. There are risk factors which are because of lifestyle. We also call these diseases lifestyle diseases. So in lifestyle, uh, we'll have unhealthy diets, uh, we'll have lack of uh, physical activity, you can have substance abuse, you can have tobacco, alcohol, then there is the added impact of air pollution. All of these are contributing factors for having non-communicable diseases. Thank you, ma'am. Now, these are lifestyle diseases. That means the effect individuals, certainly they affect individuals and before that they affect the globe. But we'd like to focus on the impact of the disease at an individual level. Could you please shed some light on that? First of all, a non-communicable disease like we've used the word chronic for it, right? Chronic means the severity is not very high. That's why a lot of times these diseases because they have low intensity symptoms, they get, go unnoticed. Like you know somebody who will have malaria, the person will have 104 fever. That person is not going to miss it. But if somebody has hypertension, he might feel a little discomfort. But maybe, you know, he's not really able to uh, go and get that evaluated and get that diagnosed. Mm -hmm. But his productivity definitely comes down. For all non-communicable diseases, the person's daily life, the quality of daily life, how much he can work, how well he can concentrate, how productive he is to the society, that is really diminished. In severe cases, it can also lead to some disabilities which makes it difficult for him to even do his daily tasks. But even with that, uh, an individual uh, might not be getting access to healthcare or there is this issue of the economic factor involved here. Because with more and more non-communicable diseases, the economic burden will increase on the person. One thing is he's already less productive, right? So maybe he's not able to make enough money. The other thing is now he's sick. So he's spending money on his health also. And that means he's going to become further poorer. And along with him, the family also suffers. There are also very high chances of premature deaths related to non-communicable diseases. Like, you know, as we talked about age advancements. So for human beings, we expect the life expectancy to be around 70 years. But any death happening before 70 years, that can be attributed to non-communicable diseases. That's why we sometimes use the word silent killer, right? Because slowly the person's body is degrading. So his productivity, how he works, how he makes money, that is impacted. And overall, his social life, his place in the society will also get impacted. One very significant point to think about here is that when your health overall is on a decline, it also makes you prone to more diseases. Like communicable diseases, also a person will have more. Like uh, you uh, mentioned the example of COVID-19. In COVID-19, the deaths were happening more commonly in people who had an existing non-communicable disease. Just say just if somebody had diabetes or if somebody had a heart disease, that person would have a higher chance of getting a complication related to non-communicable disease. So overall risk in other areas also increases. Thank you for discussing the risk factors. Now the next question is, how non-communicable diseases are going to affect people in general at the individual level? So if you look at what what's happening to people is that as they get more number of or uh, as they develop different non-communicable diseases, the overall quality of their life, their producti productivity is going to be diminished. And not just that, 
they even become more susceptible to communicable diseases like uh, the case of COVID-19 pandemic you mentioned. So in that, if you remember, the people who had an existing non-communicable disease, like people who had diabetes, people who had heart disease, some respiratory problem, they were the ones who were getting hospitalized. They were the ones who had a higher risk of, uh, you know, dying because of COVID-19. Because the overall structure, the overall systems of the body are not working that well. So it increases your risk not just dying prematurely because of a non-communicable disease, but also of having other kind of health problems. The other thing is when a person is not very productive, it also reduces his employ employability. It also reduces how much money he can make. At the same time, because of this health problem he's struggling with, he has to spend more money on taking care of that. There might be a need to make lifestyle changes. Sometimes those lifestyle changes are in itself very expensive. Like in a lot of uh, parts of the world, getting a fast food item or a processed food item is much cheaper than going and buying an organic vegetable. So if he has to make those transitions, it might need money. And money is already a constraint because of the financial burden of the disease. You interlinked very well how non-communicable diseases can add to the vulnerability related to communicable diseases. Now, individuals make up communities and you just discussed how individuals can be affected or people can be affected at the individual level. How does this category of diseases affect people at the community level? And one more question, is our health system, healthcare system adequately prepared to deal with this big challenge? Uh, first, if I talk about the community, I'll start with the family structure. Think of a situation where there is a premature death and the, uh, a premature death related to a non-communicable disease. People who are not able to reach their life expectancy and there are a lot of early deaths related to these diseases. That strains the whole family. That strains the whole society's equation with that family, with that one person missing. That one person might have been the only earning member of the family. So that puts an economic strain also on the person. And overall, again, like I talked about productivity, uh, if you think of uh, a community, if you think of a country where people are struggling with non-communicable diseases, that country in itself will find it very difficult to, you know, pump up its growth because the strain this is putting on the financial uh, resources that's going to come because of the diseases. At the same time, less productivity means a very slow economic growth. So the struggle will not be limited at the level of the person, but it is going to be uh, covering everyone in the community when the community on the whole is not healthy. To talk about healthcare systems, of course, healthcare systems are not adequately prepared for it. And that is one very big problem because the emphasis of healthcare systems or policies have been more around communicable diseases. This has been something which has been neglected a bit. And as the incidence is increasing, as deaths are increasing, healthcare system will have to take this into consideration. But again, when, when they are overtaxed, when they are overstrained, that means their efficiency also comes down. This needs to be growing, uh, the healthcare system needs to be growing in a very big way to accommodate the burden of non-communicable diseases, which is not the present day uh, state of affairs. That's true. You just talked about how nations can suffer because of non-communicable diseases. Now my next question is just a corollary question. Now there are as many as 200 nations or nearly 200 nations in the world. Are all the nations equally positioned when it comes to tackle the challenges? Uh, we can do a general categorization between developed and developing nations here. So uh, these diseases uh, are impacting developed countries more but they are also more prepared for them, right? Like those diseases from the developed countries are coming to the developing countries, uh, what we say as there is a globalization of unhealthy lifestyle. But along with this, it has not translated into the awareness, into the education, or as we spoke about preparation of healthcare systems. So even when more number of people are suffering from non-communicable diseases, in developed countries, the burden is more on the developing countries. 
86% of the total premature deaths which are happening because of non-communicable diseases, they are happening in low and middle income group countries. That is only because they have adopted a similar lifestyle, they have bad eating habits, sedentary lifestyle, but they are not aware of the challenges their health systems are not ready to give treatments or provide early detection. So more people end up dying prematurely because of non-communicable diseases there. So we discussed about the concerning aspects of the disease, the diseases and the challenges and the degrees of preparedness of different countries. Now what measures can be taken, uh, preventive measures especially, to tackle with this big challenge at the national level, at the global level? So, preventive is a very appropriate word which you have used there, Chiranjit. That is the key here. For lifestyle diseases, most of them, they can be controlled by adequate lifestyle changes. So, that means you advocate for a better diet, you advocate for a non-sedentary lifestyle, active lifestyle, games, sports, all of these things should be prominently promoted. You also talk about uh, reducing air pollution, uh, absolute bans on substance abuse could be a step which governments can take and people also first of all should be you know taught about all of this i feel the easiest way to incorporate something like this which is like a lifestyle change would be when you induct these changes right from the beginning right from the school level right along with everything else which we want to te te teach our children like geometry and calculus and all of that we need to teach them about health we need to teach them about good lifestyle because that is a level where habits are formed. And if we can inculcate that, that is going to be the basic strategy for any level at which you want to solve this problem. At the national level, at the global level, changes have to be com coming through the lifestyle and preventive healthcare has to be emphasized. So we have discussed what preventive measures can be taken to tackle with the challenge. Are there any steps that have already been taken at the global level? Yes, at the global level, you have the main organization, the World Health Organization. That is the coordinating agency and uh, we have the agenda for sustainable development. So we have sustainable development goals. Everybody knows about that. In that, there is a goal number three, which is on good health and well-being. Under that, they set up targets. In Sustainable Development Goals, there are different targets to be achieved. The timeline is 2030. So there is a goal, uh, sorry, there is a target 3.4, which talks about reducing non-communicable diseases. They have to be brought to one third the level of the current incidence, and that has to be done by 2030. Along with this, there is also a global health plan. They've also come up with a roadmap for uh, controlling non-communicable diseases. For that, they have a list of steps which have to be taken to control non-communicable diseases. And the timeline for that will be from 2023 to 2030. Again, that is to like uh, promote best practices around controlling non-communicable diseases globally through the common agency of World Health Organization. Now, India has a reputation for following global standards. It always comes up with, you know, well-equipped national policies and programs to deal with such challenges. What has already taken place at the national level? So, at the national level, we have the National Health Mission. That's like the blanket scheme for all diseases. And under that, we have a national program for prevention and control of non-communicable diseases. This has been recently revamped and there is a lot of emphasis which is given in this program. There are ideas of setting up healthcare centers specifically for this. And then along with that, there are other schemes like uh, affordable medicines being provided through Jan Oshadhi scheme. And uh, as we spoke about preventive health, the best thing which is happening now is that there is discussion on preventive health aspects. Like the government has a program which is the Eat Right movement. Then there is a Fit India movement and you have other initiatives like uh, International Yoga Day, which was again India's idea. So these measures of preventive health care, they have to be uh, taken simultaneously along with the disease control and treatment part. 
through different uh, health institutions so that we can have a multi sectoral idea of uh, controlling these diseases and meeting the targets i think we have touched upon each and every aspect of non communicable diseases one last question would be relating this particular topic with upsc civil services how important is non communicable diseases as a topic and has upsc in the previous years asked question from this particular section of course this is the most important thing right that's we are talking about the upsc exam here that's our core and if you look at the prelims exam upsc has asked some specific questions on different diseases not on non communicable diseases as a whole uh, but uh, in prelims they have asked questions on diabetes they mentioned anemia they mentioned hemophilia and they've just asked basic questions on what type of a disease it is but uh, from here because recently we had the indian council of medical research report which had come it was a state wise survey first very extensive attempt to study non communicable diseases to study which states are suffering more which are suffering less which disease is more prominent now because of that there is a lot of discussion happening on this and uh, with the new government coming there is a possibility of the health policy also incorporating some of the observations of this report so we can expect a mains question on this in the future uh when the question is coming in mains it can of course be about the disease its incidence why it is growing and uh, that could be a part of general studies paper 3 but at the same time i feel it can also be asked in your paper 2 or even in paper 1 it can be linked to society and health it can be linked to health policy governance welfare schemes because whenever there is any discussion on health health care management this is now the most critical point that health management has to focus on preventive health it has to talk about the growing burden of lifestyle diseases and non communicable diseases will be a very important zone in addressing any of those questions thank you so much ma'am for enlightening us on this particular topic i am quite sure students are going to benefit a lot from this session now dear students we hope you enjoyed and like the session try to make the most of the content of the session wish you all the very best for your journey ahead